Uh, one little thing I think I just found is, uh, again here we're just doing a live search. And before I was just scrolling down with, uh, the D-pad over here, so again if I want to go down, I can go down, but what I'd forgotten about is there's actually an easier way. You'll notice there's a scroll button over here. So I believe if I hold that down, I can now, yep, scroll with the thumb pad over here. So that's how you scroll, which is actually very easy. And does the search, I guess I hit the search button over here to bring up my browser. Yep, so that's how you go to uh, different uh, websites. So, uh, you know, let's say you want to go to Facebook. Dot com. There is your uh, Facebook page right over here. Yeah, so it is the search button that you would hit uh, just for the humor of it. I'm just seeing what the search brings up. This camera, there we go. I can scroll. Uh, you also have a zoom button, which I can zoom in on pictures, and I can zoom out. And so yeah, that's what ultimately these two buttons are right over here. And again, I can push my picture in picture button if I want to and uh, do other content with it. Okay, so this is kind of cool. This is your home menu, uh, I guess when you first boot up the unit. And you know, you can choose disc player, go to a movie, your Google setup, your Google TV setup, I should say, settings. Um, we're going to play around with the settings a little bit. See what all there is. Picture sound, disc player setting. Let's start with the very top. Set up your keypad. Yeah, nothing too exciting there. Picture and sound. Okay, so this is kind of cool. Uh, you can set your screensaver to kick in at whatever interval you like. You know, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, off, all that fun stuff. I'll set it to 10 minutes. I wouldn't mind seeing it uh, kick at some point. Resolution, it's set to auto. Again, I have a 1080p TV, but you can go here and set it to whatever output you would like. Um, screen format original, that's kind of what we originally uh, set up. HDMI setting, noise reduction, screen calibration. Uh, that's in case you messed up your screen calibration at the beginning. And you can set the audio whether, you know, it's going via your HDMI out or whether, you know, you're going HDMI out to your TV and you want to run optical to your receiver or, you know, hopefully you're going HDMI to your receiver and HDMI back to your TV. But just a bunch of audio settings and whatnot, nothing too crazy. Disc player setting. Again, this is if you wanted to, you know, up convert for you, uh, your language settings, internet, you know, do you want uh, Blu-ray live content to be able to connect to the internet or not? So that's what all there is in there. Keyboard and pointer, uh, what do we have here? Change the pointer speed setting, interesting. It's a little 
jumps are a little too much for me. This is pretty good. Sweet God, that's fast. That's great if you have ADD or you have a 150 inch TV and you need to scroll to one side or another. I dare say the default specs are fairly good. Again, the pointer does jump around a little bit, but it's really not a big deal. You know, it's not smooth like a normal keyboard and mouse, but it's still the best I've seen. Alright, so by now you guys have seen our uh, video kind of overview of how the Sony Internet TV uh, player works, um, but I wanted to wait a few days to do the conclusion part because I really wanted to kind of spend some time with the device itself, you know, reviewing it is one thing, and I think that's where a lot of reviewers get wrong, you know, they rush, 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 you know, review the product, but don't actually get to ease into it and, you know, see what it was really meant to, and so now I've used the device for about two or three days, and it's definitely changed my mind about it. Before I was like, hey, this is fun, but it's not something I really need, but when you have it there, it's actually really nice to be able to watch TV, and you're, while you're watching TV, you know, go on and jump on to numerous other sites and do whatever else you wanted. It's a little bit of a harder sell for someone, you know, who might have an iPad floating around right in the living room or something like that because they can get a lot of that out of it. But again, it is a different experience when it is on a larger TV. And again, in my case, I happen to have a 60-inch TV, but, you know, obviously even a 10-inch iPad is different than, you know, your 32-inch, your 40-inch TV, your 46-inch TV, or whatever else it might be. Again, it's also nice that the device itself doesn't really have a whole lot of limitations. Uh... Granted, it can't do QuickTime uh, files. I tried going on Apple's website and seeing if you know if those work. But on the flip side of it, unlike you know the iPad and things of that nature, it handles Flash absolutely no problem. So if you go to VMO sites or whatever other site, loading content is not an issue. So again, while you're watching your movie, you can easily jump onto it. And I think that's really the promise of it. You know, you could be watching MSNBC and you could log on to your E-Trade account and be scrolling through that. You could be watching, you know, Fringe and say you want to know something about Anna Torva, so you jump on IMDb at the same time, and you can look her up while you're watching the show, and from there on you can make a tweet about it, and it's all kind of happening at the same time, and the promise is only going to get bigger, you know, once 2011 rolls by, and that's when you're going to actually get Android apps available on it as well. Right now there's definitely a limited amount of content available, you know, outside of the web itself. So I'm just saying, you know, specific apps that are designed for it, like the Curiosity streaming content and the NBA app and things of that nature. But uh, outside of that, you know, anything you can do on the web, you can pretty much do on this device. So again, it's definitely, I think, where the future is going to go with television. Is it there right now? Probably not. You know, it's something that's going to definitely has, you know, some kinks that it needs to get worked out on one little up. Uh, Annoying thing would be if you're watching TV and you minimize it on the bottom right hand corner and you're on the web and you jump on something that has audio, you can't, or at least not that I could figure out in any shape or form, you can't mute the TV aspect of it and just stick to the web portion of it. You either mute your television or you don't. So I mean, it'd be kind of nice to have that, but I mean, again, outside of that, uh, so far I've had it for around three days and it's been a fantastic device. So like I said, if you're the type of person who likes multitasking, likes uh, having web content, you know, available to you while you're in the living room uh, or in the office, let's even say. It really doesn't matter, I guess, where the destination of the device is. It's been a fantastic choice. And for me, I prefer the Internet TV uh, Blu-ray player because at that point, you're getting a Blu-ray player and you can hook it up to any kind of TV, whereas opposed to, you know, uh, if you go with one of the lineups of the Sony TVs, that have it built in, it's great, but then you're obviously only limited to that TV. And again, I'm kind of a home theater freak, so I do prefer to go with the high-end uh, Bravi series, like the HX series or the LX series from them, which is their current XBR. So, again, uh, I hope you guys, you know, enjoyed the review, and if you guys have any questions, just, uh, you know, email our site, comment on us, check us out on Twitter, Facebook, whatever it might be, but uh, we would love to hear back from you guys.